Let's talk about YouTube Kids cartoons, a bizarre trend that has been growing in popularity and has become one of the biggest subgenres on the website. Now, you might be thinking, seems innocent enough. Well, It's not exactly what you think it is. Spider-Man, Elsa, Peppa Pig, Minions, nobody is safe. These characters are thrown into bizarre situations that range from rotting teeth to cutting their fingers off. So what's going on here? Why have these types of videos grown so popular and so quickly? It seems that 2016 has been their biggest year yet, and they show no sign of slowing down. These videos continue to spread, but they have their reasons. Reasons that go beyond their graphic nature. The people who run these channels know exactly what they are doing and how to use YouTube's system to their advantage. And guys, they are getting rich off of it. There's a lot more to this than you think, and we are going to cover every bit of it. So let's take a closer look at the dark side of YouTube kids cartoons. I remember when I first stumbled across these types of cartoons on YouTube. It was a few months ago while at a family reunion. My young nieces were there and they were watching Peppa Pig on my sister's iPad. Except it wasn't Peppa Pig, at least not the official version. This particular video was much more crude and much more graphic, to the point where I wondered if this was some kind of parody video my nieces stumbled upon. Later that evening, I decided to investigate and see if this video was just a bizarre exception. Oh God, was I wrong, incredibly wrong. This upload was but one of millions, and I realized that this was a growing trend on YouTube. One that spawned from the cesspool, that is the Elsa and Spider-Man genre. Oh. It's hard to pinpoint the exact video that launched this trend, but from what I can tell, it started with toy channels, ones that would role play with the action figures and dolls and make up their own story. I got you, Queen Elsa. Spider-Man, oh, thank you. I will swing us to safety with my spider web. Uh oh, I'm out of spider web. Whoa. I suspect that children enjoy this role playing stuff. I mean, when I was a kid, I made up stories for my toys. Maybe it's a way for these young viewers to vicariously enjoy stuff they may not have. That or perhaps it's like window shopping, but via YouTube video. Again, I don't know the exact video or channel that started this trend, but I am pretty sure that Disney car toys was the first one to run with this idea. Idea. And with over 5 million subscribers and almost 7 billion views, it's incredibly hard to argue with these results. It's difficult to get a precise estimate, but this channel earns about $6,000 per day. That's over $2 million per year. Now we're starting to realize why these types of channels are growing both in quantity and variety. It's super lucrative. From toys, to live action skits, to poorly animated cartoons. We can see how this trend evolved and how people are trying to get a piece of that pie. That sweet, clickbaity, repetitive pie. People tend to copy success, and that is no exception here. Once someone figures out a successful formula, it gets copied, and you can see evidence of that all over this genre. Title cards are ripped off, video ideas are plagiarized, 
visual assets are stolen. For something as innocent as fictional children characters, there's a lot of ruthlessness that goes on in this category of YouTube. And I haven't even mentioned the worst of it yet. The thing that stood out to me the most about these cartoons is how graphic and nasty they are. How some of these characters are doing things that would not fly on television. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate artistic freedom, but this, this isn't art. What we have here is clickbait for kids, and it gets ugly. We got needles, bleeding, nudity, fecal matter, urine, pregnancy, farts, amputation, death. There's even some rapey stuff, and the list goes on and on. So what's going on here? Why are these videos featuring such strange and graphic topics? I tried to reach out to some child psychologist, but none of them got back to me. So you will have to put up with my own research and speculation. The main thing I see here is clickbait and how videos are trying to outdo one another to try and be more outrageous than the competition so that they can stand out from the crowd. That's why we went from this to this. Clickbait works on grown-ups, so I see why it works on kids too. Use enticing images with a yellow background while using all caps with your buzzwords. Same concept, different audience. The only difference I can see is that kids are more inexperienced than adults. They are going through a stage where they are hyper curious. So I can imagine that these videos are even more successful with children because they are more likely to click on it. Outside of clickbait, I wondered if the graphic visuals resonated with kids on a psychological level. Are they innately curious about fecal matter, needles, and pregnancy? I couldn't find any concrete evidence, but it's something to ponder. I also wonder if the creators of these types of channels have a secret fetish, one that they are quietly introducing to children. I reached out to some of the owners of these channels, but they never got back to me. So whether or not this is a fetish thing, who can say? There are common denominators though, and we see it with this category on YouTube. Unboxings, Kinder Eggs, Toy Roleplay, Live Action Skits, Poop, Needles, Spider-Man, Elsa, Horrendous Quality. It's just a big pile of clickbait filth, and its purpose is to get children hooked on it. To binge these videos from one to the other and rack up that sweet, sweet YouTube money. These types of channels are even more financially successful than Let's Players because kids don't know what ad block is. Now, there is the question of whether or not this is all satire, but I don't think that's the case for the majority of these channels. Yeah, there are some people who do it for the lols, but this is just too big and lucrative of an operation to be just a joke. If you are making millions of dollars a year, there's a good chance that you realize that there is money to be made from these kids and that you need to pander to them. And if it was a joke, I think I would see the word satire in the tags of the video. I read an interview about a lady who runs a channel like this. She launched it to promote her own line of dolls, but now the ad money is good enough on its own. And we see everybody else trying to do the same. Seriously, look at how many results there are. For the record, phone apps are doing the same thing. Strange games where they deliver babies or clean the wounds of their favorite characters. I seriously don't get it. 2014 was the year where these types of videos arrived, but 2016 was when they exploded in popularity and they show no sign of slowing down. <laughs> Oh, no. 
So we have talked about the origin, nature, and growth of these videos. Now it's time to talk about the problems. As I have mentioned before, there are graphic things in these videos, topics that aren't suitable for a young audience, yet they seem to sneak into the search results. Check this out. I have restricted mode on, but these videos pop up in the search. How is that possible? It's because these channels go around YouTube's system. They know how to use tags that allow them to go viral with a young demographic. YouTube's algorithm depends on a video's title and tags. So unless a video is reported by a viewer or detected via copyright, it will go unnoticed. And guess what? They usually do. I find it funny that YouTube will actively block controversial videos intended for mature audiences, but will allow this garbage to do its thing with kids. These channels know how to play the tag game to use as many buzzwords as they can in order to get the attention of kids. Elsa and Spider-Man, for example, are the two most popular. And algorithm-wise, it's just a numbers game. Who cares about quality? Just churn out as much clickbaity garbage as possible. It's all the same to kids, right? The more videos you have, the more likely they are to go viral with kids. Because of this mentality, the bar for standards has been set low. I mean, really low. <laughs> this generation is truly growing up with the internet. Everywhere I go, I see kids on iPads and iPhones. It's a way for parents to keep their children busy, and I won't fault them for that. But these YouTube channels are not held to any kind of FCC regulation. There are rules set by YouTube, but that's it. And guess what? These rules are super easy to get around. So these creators are putting out the craziest stuff they can to get the most attention they can to get the most money they can. It's crude, it's sneaky, and it thrives. And that really ticks me off. There is the matter of copyright and what companies think to have their character represented in such repugnant ways. But as far as I know, they don't really care. Now, I'm not sure if this is due to fair use or if they enjoy the free publicity, but uh, yeah, I suppose they let sleeping dogs lie. So is there a solution to this? Yeah, there are a few. As I said, there is a restricted mode for YouTube. Just go down to the bottom and turn it on. There's also an app called YouTube Kids. Both of these solutions are not foolproof though, and graphic videos might sneak in via video recommendation. But the best solution I can offer is for a parent to watch the videos with their kids. If it's a video that you like, then create a playlist for it. Add other uploads that meet your standards and just use that particular playlist for your kids. That way, the videos won't automatically play trash you haven't approved. All in all, these videos are most likely not going anywhere, and they will continue to grow more popular. I don't see YouTube intervening, nor the companies who own the IPs, so it will be up to you parents and guardians to make the difference. I am all for creative freedom and speech, but these videos are not that. Not by a long shot. They are low quality, crude, and offer little to no educational programming. I mean, kid cartoons don't have to be just blatant, boring school lessons. But these videos are on the other side of the spectrum. They offer nothing but take everything. Hey guys, just wanted to say thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and leave a comment down below. You can subscribe for more future videos and check out my other stuff if you want. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.